recycling's been in the news a lot lately, and on today's show, I want to show you some youth gardening ideas that you can involve your children or grandchildren that will help them get involved in gardening as well as a little bit in recycling. We're going to talk a little bit about using pot bottles or plastic bottles and some corsage boxes and different ideas in making terrariums, compost columns, and then we'll finish up telling you a little bit about how to make a hair raising spud. But to begin with, we want to start with showing you which kind of pot bottles that you can use and tell you how to prepare them to use in these terrariums. There are two that work real well. Those are the Gatorade bottles and your regular pot bottles. Now notice on the Gatorade bottle, there isn't a label that is attached with any kind of glue and there's not a round bottom, but it will work in some of the ideas. On the pot bottle, you notice they use heated glue to stick the label on, which actually is the hardest part of this whole project in getting that label off. And we want to share with you a little bit on some tips on how to do that. The first thing that you want to do is fill up the plastic bottle with hot water. And usually anywhere from 90 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit is the best. This will help hold the bottle where you can hold it and scrape the glue off and it will heat it up and make it easier to remove. If you get the water too hot, say over 170 degrees, you can get a warped appearance and it won't uh, work for your terrarium projects. But fill the bottle up with hot water. As it sits a while, it's a good idea to use like a razor blade and scrape as much of the glue off as you can. And then with the cleaning solvent such as alcohol, Dab a little bit on a rag and it will help remove the rest of it. But again, the key to it is warming that plastic up and that glue where to come off a little bit easier. Now some of your projects you want to remove the bottom. So set the bottle in hot water and that will help loosen up the glue there too. Otherwise, if you want it on, try not to break that bottom off. Well, the first project that we want to show you is making a compost column and I've got one down here to keep from blowing over. This is a compost column and it's the same process and idea of using a compost column that you might have in your garden or a compost pile. And we've actually used three or two bottles here. You can make them with three. We've used a Gatorade bottle for the bottom and we've cut the top off which we've used for the very top. Then we've cut our pot bottle the bottom off of it and turn it upside down. And the best way to cut these bottles is to lay them on the side, try to rotate them where you can mark them with a pen and that will help get a straight line and then use a razor blade again to cut them off. Now I haven't taped mine because I want to show you again how we've, we've constructed this. The centerpiece we've actually used like pantyhose or again cheesecloth or anything like that will work and just pull that over the bottom and use a rubber band to hold that on. And then the process is very simple. Just use different kinds of scraps, uh, table scraps, anything other than greasy foods. You can put grass clippings, any kind of thing in this column and it will compost from the bacteria and fungi. And if you'll notice here on ours, we're starting to get some mold and fungi and bacteria starting to break it down. And as it composts, it will drain into the liquid state at the bottom, as you can see. And then we'll use that to fertilize our plants. Now, some other things that you can use, we've got some bananas that we've chopped up, the peelings, and we'll just throw those in there. And the same principle applies again as a compost pile. The smaller you break the pieces in two, the quicker it's going to decompose. And then we've got some leftover lettuce again that we'll just throw in there. And again, grass clippings, any of those things will help decompose and it will work just like a compost pile. And one thing that's real interesting too is there's really not a lot of odor associated with this because you have the lid on the top. And as it decomposes, again, just use it to water some of your house plants. But that's a good idea, and it's very colorful sometimes from the bacteria and fungi that are growing in the bottle. The next thing we want to show you is how to make a terrarium using pot bottles again. And 
what we've done here is we've cut off two pop bottles and we've got a bottom section and then we've just stacked one on top. And because ours are setting outside today, the sun has heated them up and caused them to fog up quite a bit. So you can actually stack them as high as you can go and those make nice little terrariums. But what we're going to show as far as demonstrating is how to make a terrarium using a corsage box. Again, you can keep these once you receive your corsages and they're real handy little ideas to make terrariums. Locate where the bottom part of your terrarium is and the first thing that you want to do is apply a loose matter such as sand or maybe some pebble gravel, something real small, coarser sand would even be better to allow for drainage. And we've not got a real deep tray here, so we're just going to apply sand at the bottom. And you'll just apply a few um, scoops of sand at the bottom just to level it out. And again, this is a, to allow for drainage. And you just want to level that out. And if you have a deeper container, you want to make sure that you put in some pebbles and those kinds of things so you'll get better drainage. The next process is to add a little bit of soil. And you want to make sure you use sterilized soil because anytime you're in a closed container like this, you'll have a better chance of having problems with insects or possibly disease. And if you use your garden soil, you can sterilize it by putting it in the oven for about 30 minutes at 150 degrees but make sure it's in there long enough that it heats up entirely. Again, put our soil in, and we've just purchased some sterilized soil that's pretty inexpensive that was on sale. Tap it down, and one problem in terrariums, as you can see, they have a lot of tendency to put a lot of humidity and get too wet and actually can rot your plants. So another thing that you can purchase is charcoal that is a soil refiner and it actually helps absorb any of the odors and, and keep out any of the bacteria or fungi that might be trying to grow. So we will spread a little bit of that in and it will help absorb some of that humidity. And you can put it between your layers even of sand and soil as well. Now when selecting plants for a terrarium, you want to make sure that you get some that are low growing and we've got some good examples here of some terrarium plants that are low growing, that like a lot of humidity and do real well. We've got two examples here of what is called Phytonia. A common name would be the silver nerve plant or the red nerve plant, and this one is blooming for us. The silver nerve plant would be a good selection here because it is a dwarf, more grow, low growing compact plant. The red nerve plant is what we used in the bottom portion of our terrarium here. But when you buy your plants, try to notice and see if you can get more than one plant inside that container. Loosen it up, and as you can see, that would fill up the, the terrarium all by itself. And we've got two plants here, so we're going to pull them apart. And one thing that you want to do is break away some of those roots so you can get it in the terrarium, and it will still grow for you. You're just doing a little bit of root pruning. And if the tops of your plants are too tall, you can even pinch those out and use the cuttings in them and they'll root real well for you too. So just make a little hole, get that plant placed down in there real well and tap it around, pack it down. And then we're gonna put another plant in here called a strawberry geranium or begonia. And this is one left over from the plant that I split out in the top part of our terrarium here. And again, loosen it up, pull away the soil, trim the roots up a little bit, and we'll put this one over in this corner, tap it in, and then there's all kinds of nice ideas that you can do for decorating the terrariums. If you've got a mirror, these make nice little reflections like of a, a pond, and we're going to stick that one right in the center and then decorate it with any kind of rocks. And another good thing is lichens or bark that's grown on an old tree, as well as moss that you might find along a, a pond or a, a ditch or a stream. And when you collect the moss, make sure you keep it in a plastic bag because it requires a lot of humidity. 
Now also, when you're gathering things from the wild like this, remember you're gonna reinfect your soil, so you wanna be careful and keep an eye on it. Another plant that we're not gonna use because we don't have room is a variegated ivy, and these make good plants for terrariums as well because you can continually pinch them out and they'll grow real well in a terrarium with the humidity. Once we've got our plants and our terrarium ready and all of our decorations, don't forget to water them and just mist a little bit of water in there on the plants, soak it pretty good, and then if you got any soil in the top, it's a good time to wash it off so it'll run down in. And now we have our finished product, a terrarium using a corsage box. Also using pot bottles, keep in mind that there is a three liter size that you can turn over on its side, cut a hole in it, and make a terrarium on its side and then some of the remaining parts when you're cutting off your terrariums you can use as dish gardens. We've got a bottom and the top here where you can take the lid off if it gets too steamy. And some people even like to use different sizes of the bottom making a dome terrarium. Whatever you use, keep in mind that putting a terrarium in full sunlight or on top of a TV or anything that collects a lot of heat really isn't a good idea because it can burn the plants. And keep an eye on them to make sure they don't get too wet if that should happen, just take the lids off and let them dry out a little bit. Now the last thing I want to show you is what we call our hair raising spud. And that's not really using any recycling products, but it is a lot of fun for kids using produce from your garden. The first thing that you would want to do is get a potato, a good baking potato of good size. And what we're going to do, it's similar to the Mr. Potato Head, only we're using products again from the garden. You want to cut an end off of both ends of the potato, where it looks like this. The next step is to place a little bit of cotton inside the cavity that you dig out on one end, and rip the cotton up and wet it down real well. And then plant some seed in the top, such as grass seed, or you can even use some bird seed at the local store. And the best thing again is to make sure that you soak the seed several days ahead of time in water or in a moist paper towel like we've done before on the show to get better germination and let it start growing up. And once it does, the next thing that you want to do is make a face on the potato and make like a potato head. And we're just going to use some radishes from our garden put a couple of eyes on it, and here's what our radishes look like. We've just cut them in half, and we use a toothpick to stick through there, and we'll make a couple of eyes, and you can use dried vegetables as well, and then we're gonna put a mouth on using one of our peppers. And this is one of our immature sweet banana peppers that we harvested, and we just split it in half. Now we've got a face, and as the grass seed or bird seed starts to grow, you can continue to give the uh, hair raising spud a haircut. And this is a lot of fun for our younger kids. They really enjoy this product project. And also as the seed and grass starts to grow, it takes nutrients from the potato, converts them in, and will grow for several weeks. Now these like indirect sun because you've got a green leafy plant here that needs some sun for it to grow. And again, we cause this our hair raising spud. Now these are some fun ideas to involve your kids in gardening and recycling. And if you didn't get all of the details or facts and you'd like to write to us here at Oklahoma Gardening, just send a stamp self-addressed envelope and we'll send back to you some instructions on how to do these projects. I hope you've enjoyed it and I also hope you will involve your kids in gardening and recycling. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.